Right, hello everyone and welcome to WPW in the Danger Zone. It's our second TV special on VH1 and I've signed for three TV specials so far. Hoping to get a pay-per-view deal or something before that runs out. It's looking less and less likely, but we'll just have to keep going. Uh, probably signing up for some more TV specials until we can get a pay-per-view deal. But I think it's better to show it on free TV. Uh, get a little bit of TV money that I wouldn't otherwise get. And I don't think it's going to really hurt the attendance of the shows at all to do that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm ready to run this big event for WPW. Let's hope it's a successful one. We're going to the UIC Pavilion in Chicago. I don't think we'll sell it out, but we'll maximise the amount of money we can make, hopefully. Yeah, so let's let's get on with it. Let's run the show, see what we've got. The first segment is a pre-show match between AJ Styles and Drago. In a pre-show bout, that subpar wrestling a little heat. AJ Styles defeated Drago in 10 minutes and 6 seconds by pinfall with a springboard 450. By AJ steamed off his game, Drago steamed off his game, announcing quality lifted the match. No particularly good performances there in a 43D. It's not amazing, but they're both quite low on the card at the moment. Uh, they're both good wrestlers, so I'm sure that if we did that in a year's time, that would be a much better match. Anyway, that's our pre-show. Just getting those two boys on there because they didn't have a match tonight, having both lost in the Cruiserweight title tournament. So thought I'd stick them together, give them a little run out in front of a big crowd. See how they did. Not very well, it seems, but never mind. We'll go, we'll start the show for proper now and go to the first segment. Right, the show opens with lots of pyro and sweeping shots of the crowd. WPW owner Randy Savage makes his way to the ring to the cheers of his supporters. He welcomes everyone in attendance and those watching on VH1 and plays to the live crowd, announcing some of the names we'll be seeing tonight and gauging the crowd's reaction. He signs off by telling everyone that he hopes they enjoy the show. So there you go, and that got an 80. That's really good. 80 rating, really good way to start the show with a big rating from Randy. He was superb working without a script, and he had the crowd in the palm of his hand the whole time. He's a pro, Randy. He's great. He's the only guy who can pop a rating like that at the moment. So I really need some more stars. But they're all tied up on their turn of contracts at the moment. It'll be a couple more months until some of them start coming off, I think. And it's up to a year for some of the bigger ones. So we'll just have to keep ploughing through, picking up who we can uh, to try and raise these these ratings and try and get a little bit more star power on the, on the card. But at the moment, we've got everyone we can get, really. So anyway, we'll worry about signings later. But let's get on with the show. And I think this will be the first match. So let's get on to the next segment. Yeah, it's the first match, Psychosis versus Aguila. In a bout that had decent wrestling but little heat, Psychosis defeated Aguila in 12 minutes 14 seconds by two straight falls, with the final fall happening by pinfall with a guillotine leg drop. There you go, so he beat him 2 0. I'm not really that keen on that result, to be honest. It would have been better for Aguila to get a fall, but I suppose it's a bit obvious to, to have it as 2 1. They normally finish that way, so I suppose in some ways it's quite good to make the crowd think that anything can happen. And for a first match, I suppose that's a good idea. Yeah, so there we go. Uh, Psychosis did a 50. Aguila pulled a 44. Psychosis suffered a broken pelvis. Oh, Jesus Christ. Really? That sounds like a bad one, doesn't it? Well, we'll have to wait and see. But that got a 50D+. Plus. And it's a good thing he's not appearing in the rest of the show, because... Well, I don't really want people pulling double duty anyway. But he's injured, so we'll have to see how bad that is. Uh, 50D+, plus. we'll go to the next segment. So Mantel's telling me he got heat back... Oh, right, okay. Dutch Mantel's telling me Aguila got heat backstage following this match after he injured Psychosis with a botched move. Oh, he broke his pelvis, I don't know what. Probably chucked him out of the ring or something. Anyway, well, that's not good. Aguila's got everyone pissed off at him and psychosis is hurt so bit of a disaster really that one right and next segment a video package plays showing daniels insulting the force and revealing the extreme horseman as his chosen team to take them on 
Furnish retorts that Phil Lafon is injured and we get a recap of the match at a savage welcome where Lafon breaks his arm. We see Siaki come out to substitute for Phil Lafon and help Doug Furnace. Daniels agrees to take on Siaki and a loser leaves the building match, meaning that if Siaki loses, he will not be able to aid Doug Furnace later tonight, leaving him in a two-on-one situation against the extreme horseman. If Daniel loses, he will not be in the horseman's corner and Siaki will be able to even the odds. It's a little pre-match video. Got 24E. That's rubbish. Right, next. Yeah, next segment. In about that terrible wrestling and non-existent crowd heat, Christopher Daniels defeated Sonny Siaki in 6 minutes 33 by pinfall with a last rights. And they got a 41D. Meh, not brilliant. But Sonny Siaki is not very popular at the moment, so that's probably why. Uh, announcing quality lifted the match. Daniels did all right with a 42, but not amazing. Siaki did a 31, which is a bit rubbish. The Force Awakens storyline has advanced with this segment. Right, so now we know that Daniels will be in the corner of the Extreme Horseman and Sonny Siaki won't be there. So that means that Doug Furness has got no partner. He should be taking on a tag team on his own and Daniels at ringside and presumably Medeja wandering about looking nice as well. The next segment, a video package plays, first introducing Jazz as one of the top female talents in wrestling, being a former member of the ECW roster. Her hometown of New Orleans and her training at the hands of Rod Price are also detailed. We hear from Jazz that she's the first lady of Extreme and she's ready to dominate the women's division in WPW. Selena Majors is introduced next as an experienced professional who is considered to be one of the most accomplished female wrestlers in America. We see that she has had a successful career as part of LPWA, WCW and AWA. Majors talks about how she wants to legitimise women's wrestling and show that women can cut it in the ring. She says that there is some great female talent that is more than just window dressing and she wants to help to showcase this by leading WPW's women's division. And that's that. So, a nice little pre-match thing for them too, which got a 30 E+. Not very good. Jazz is getting better at her gimmick. Let's see how the match does. So we get 39 D minus in a terrible match. Selena Majors defeated Jazz in 6 minutes 56 by pinfall. And again, the announcing quality lifted the match. Uh, Jazz and Selena Majors didn't really perform very well, neither of them. So, alright. Well, that's not very good, but... All right, whatever. My women's division needs work. I know that. Right, next segment. There's not a lot of good female wrestlers about. Next bit. Right, so we get a video package recapping the Cruiserweight title tournament and showing Tajiri and Maritato's route to the final. We see that Tajiri has beaten Julio De Niro and Aguila to get here, whereas Maritato overcame AJ Styles in dubious circumstances before beating Kaz Hayashi thanks to Julio De Niro's interference. The video hypes up the modern, fast-paced cruiserweight style and the exciting young wrestlers who are competing in the division, ending with a recap of the unveiling of the new belt. Maritato's getting better at his gimmick. 29E, that's rubbish. But these are all, most of them are uh, minor segments, these little pre-match videos. They won't actually count towards the show rating and they won't show up in the history either, so it's just... It's for the purposes of telling the story of the event, really. So they're not. that's not too much of a disaster, 29E. I mean, all these little videos at the start are rated on people's overness, so that's why it's so low, because a lot of these guys aren't very over. I mean, Drago's probably, what, five at the moment? I don't really know. I can't remember. So let's get to the match. It's Tajiri and Jimmy Maritato for the Cruiserweight title. So in a bout that had subpar wrestling and little heat, despite us building a tournament over the last month, thank you very much, Jimmy Maritato defeated Tajiri in 13 minutes 17 seconds by pinfall with a kiss of death following interference from Julio De Niro. Uh, Jimmy Maritato wins the WPW Cruiserweight title, so there you go. Uh, announcing quality lifted the match. Maritato 35, Tajiri 46. <clears throat> Cruiserweight storyline, advanced but lost heat with a 46D, which isn't that great. But they're firmly a couple of mid-carders, so that's probably pretty much par for the course for a mid-carder at the moment. 
Anyway, let's go to the next segment, which is Jimmy Maritaro celebrating. He has done it. With a little help from Julio De Niro, he's the first ever WPW Cruiserweight Champion. Maritaro holds the belt aloft as the crowd shower him with booze, and De Niro joins him to gloat over their success. They got 44D. <laughs> Those are not too bad, I suppose. All right, let's move on. So we've got Shane Douglas cutting a promo on Rob Van Dam, branding him an undeserving champion. He says that he will prove that he is the franchise of WPW and that as champion, he will raise the profile of WPW a hundred times higher than RVD ever could. He calls RVD a stuntman and says that he is a real wrestler and he's going to give RVD a lesson in pain that he will never forget. Right, Shane Douglas improvised well throughout the segment and that's good. Uh, World title storyline advanced but lost heat. Even with a 59. Oh well. Never mind. So next segment we've got a quick recap of the ongoing feud between Christopher Daniels and The Force. We are also reminded that Sonny Siaki cannot compete in the following match, having lost to Daniels earlier. This means that Doug Furness will have to take on the extreme horseman by himself. To make things worse, Daniels is in the horseman's corner. Furness is getting better at his gimmick. And the Force Awakens storyline has advanced but lost heat. Oh, well, that's not fair. It should be a minor... Uh, no, maybe I didn't make that one a minor segment. Bit stupid. Oh, well, never mind. Next bit. So, just as the match is about to begin, we hear a voice over the PA telling everyone to hold it for a second. We then see Phil LaFon coming down the entrance ramp. He says he's just been at the hospital getting his cast removed. He tells Daniels and the horsemen that they must be pleased to see him as they've made such a fuss about not being able to face both members of the force. Well, now they've got their chance. So there you go. A surprise. Phil LaFon is going to be able to compete in this next match. And he's getting better at his gimmick. Right, next segment. So this will be the actual match. In a terrible match, the Force defeated Extreme Horseman in 10 minutes 21 when Doug Furness defeated C.W. Anderson by pinfall with a Frankensteiner. All right, a Frankensteiner, really. Okay, I. Anderson was really off his game. Announcing quality lifted the match. Phil LaFont got a 30. So the best guy was C.W. Anderson with an in-ring performance of 37, even though he underperformed and he was off his game. It advanced the storyline of The Force Awakens. So there you go. I mean, maybe C.W. Anderson's a good guy to have around. He's pulling a 37 even though he underperformed. Interesting stuff. Right, so 36D minus, which is not very good at all, is it? Oh, well, I know I've got a crappy tag team division. I really need to get some better tag teams. But again, like the women and like the main eventers, there's just not a lot of people around. They're all signed up to WWE, aren't they? Or they're on them silly Turner contracts where they can't get out of them. All right, next segment. All right, we get a recap of all the paranormal events that Steve Carino has been enduring at the hands of Devon Storm and his mysterious master. I got 45D for a little recap. Uh, Devon Storm's getting better at his gimmick. It's 45D, not too bad. Let's see the match. In about that decent wrestling but didn't have much heat, despite all the build-up, Steve Carino defeated Devon Storm in 13 minutes and 2 seconds by pinfall with an eternal dream. That's an interesting one. I don't know what that is. Devon had a 47. Steve Carino had a 58. Storm in a teacup storyline has advanced with this segment. 57C-. minus. Yeah, not too bad. I had probably had high hopes for that one. But... Yeah, 57C minus is what we got. So, let's have a look at the next segment. Uh, Steve Carino says he can perform better if you use me in matches that suit my skills. Putting me in a hardcore base match does not play to my strengths. Oh, I disagree. I'd say that is one of your strengths, Steve. Never mind. Let's keep going. Devon Storm lies beaten and bloody in the ring, having been defeated by Steve Carino. The war has taken its toll on both competitors. And Carino can barely stumble up the entrance ramp. As he gets to the top and turns to thank the fans, he's suddenly covered in a torrent of blood falling from the rafters. As he struggles to wipe the blood away from his eyes, he's hit from behind by a hooded figure brandishing a baseball bat. Devon Storm has managed to pull himself together enough to grab a microphone, and he admonishes Carino, 
telling him that Storm was merely a sacrifice in order to lure Karina to his master. Storm implores his master to reveal himself in all his power. The dark figure whips off his hood to reveal his identity. We see Vampiro standing before us. He nods in approval at Storm as Carino writhes in agony at his feet. A few more shots of the bat renders Carino unconscious, and Storm and Vampiro leave as the crowd react in shock and anger. Well, there you go. Uh, Devon Storm and Steve Carino did well going off script. That's really good. Vampiro did well going off script as well. Carino's getting better at his gimmick. Vampiro's gimmick debuted, and it's got very good. So lots of pluses there, lots of really good stuff. Only a 58C minus for that segment. I was hoping for a little more because Vampiro is pretty over. and We haven't used him yet. That's kind of his debut there. 58C minus is okay, but not amazing. All right, let's keep going. A video plays recapping the formation of a new low and Angel Dust's vendetta against Randy Savage. We see how determined Angel Dust is to sabotage any success that WPW enjoy as he sees it as a worthless venture. So Cronus is getting better at his gimmick and the King's Road storyline advance but lost heat. Mm, that's annoying. 51D plus is alright considering all the people in that segment and their various levels of skill and overness. Right, we will get to the next segment then, which is the match. This is the Danger Zone match that I made up for this particular little feud. It's basically a straight wrestling match, but once you get outside the ring, anything goes. So it's a bit weird. It's kind of like a hardcore match. The danger zone is basically all the way around the outside of the ring. There's loads of like tables and crap. Um, but it's a, I suppose it's a bit like Hell in the Cell in that you, you've got all this stuff that you can do. You can do pretty much whatever you want outside the ring, but you've still got to win the match in the ring at some point. You've still got to pin that man in the middle of the ring. So it's an interesting sort of concept. Kind of two different rule sets, one for in the ring and one for outside the ring. So I think it's an interesting idea. It could work, say, if we had a, a technical wrestler against a hardcore wrestler. You know, you could say in the ring the technical wrestler would have the advantage, but outside the ring, in the danger zone, the hardcore man would have an advantage. So I think it's an interesting concept. I'm not saying it's as clever as the Royal Rumble or something like that, but I'm giving myself a bit of credit, I suppose. Angel Dust and Nightmare have absolutely zero chemistry as partners. That is the one thing I did not want to see because I was really hoping that I'd be able to sort of run with these guys as a stable. If we can't do tag matches together, that's really going to fuck that up. Nightmare was getting knackered at the end because he's a big fat fuck. Shouldn't really speak ill of the dead, but I just did. Luna Vachon did some good work at ringside. There you go. I've balanced it out now. Angel Dustin, yeah, all right, they got zero chemistry, I know. Nightmare got 34, Angel Dust got 55, which was the best. Kings Road storyline advanced, but lost heat. All oh, my storylines losing heat at the pay per view. It should be the other way round. Uh, 52 D plus is okay, but again, not amazing. We're going to need a really good main event, but I think it will be. Angel Dust doesn't want to be in hardcore matches. You've all got pretty decent hard. I wouldn't have done it if you didn't have decent hardcore ratings. So shut up. And Nightmare says the same. And Leparka says the same. Thank you, John Cronus, for being the only fucking one that didn't moan. Anulo continue to beat down Cronus and Leparka after the match, bringing in Daphne and Luna to join the assault. Randy Savage furiously rushes to the ring, waving at them to stop this madness. It's macho madness. Having been baited in by a new low, they set about Savage in a brutal four-way attack, laying into the WPW owner with boots and fists. As a final coup de grace, they lay him on a table and Nightmare ascends to the top rope. Ascends to the top rope, you prick. Ascends to the top rope and hits an ugly splash that poleaxes Savage through the table. Attendants rush the ring and swarm a new low as EMTs attend to Savage. To the fans' horror, Savage is stretched out and rushed into a waiting ambulance. So them buggers from a new low kick the shit out of Randy Savage again, and now he's in hospital. Uh, Angel Dust worked the crowd well, using the freedom to improvise to his advantage. That's good. Savage is getting better at his gimmick. 
Angel Dust looked good. Luna Vachon did not look good. Cronus didn't look good either. And at least we got a little bit more heat back into the King's Road storyline because we got a 63C, which is pretty good. Slap Randy in there and the rating goes up. We know this. Well, that's lifted things a little bit. Hopefully, is that going to be the best segment we've done so far? I think so. Uh, so we're on the up. Let's see if we can keep building towards the main event. So a little warm down match here. In about they had decent wrestling but little heat. Kaz Hayashi defeated Julio De Niro in 6 minutes 48 by pinfall with a final cut. So well done Kaz. De Niro uh, got 43. Kaz had a 52. Cruiserweight storyline advanced. He didn't lose any heat which is good. 51 D plus is alright for a little kind of go for a piss and get some food for the last couple of matches kind of match so let's keep going we'll, we're getting towards the semi-main event now we see a quick recap of Fit Finley's haranguing of Norman Smiley alluding to Smiley's difficult early days in wrestling we also get flashbacks of Smiley's nightmare about being hazed by Finley so there you go 48D plus, meh not amazing but it's just a little pre-match. And the actual match, in a decent match, Finley defeated Smiley in 16 minutes 52 by submission after blatantly cheating. So Finley did a 60 and Smiley did a 55. That's really good. They advanced the world title storyline because they're both still in that for some reason. And it got 62C. That's really good. Well pleased with that for a semi-main event. Let's hope the main event can live up to it. And we should get a pretty good rating. But if we're going to start moving this popularity, we need to start getting 70s. All right, let's have a look at the next segment. All right, so a video package plays recapping Shane Douglas's pursuit of Rob Van Dam's WPW World Heavyweight Championship. We see Douglas becoming number one contender in the war of words between himself and the champion, culminating in this matchup for the world title. And that got a 64C. That's pretty good. I think that I left that as a major angle as well rather than a minor one. So I'm hoping that's going to bump the show rating up a little bit. And let's hope that this main event match is a real cracker. Let's have a look. Well, that was a 70C+. Plus. It was a cracker. I'm really pleased with that. In about that good wrestling and decent reaction from the crowd. Well, thank God. We actually managed to wake the fucking crowd up for the main event. Well done. I'm really pleased. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, Rob Van Dam defeated Shane Douglas in 25 minutes 29 seconds by pinfall with a frog splash. Rob Van Dam makes defence number two of his WPW World Heavyweight title, so he manages to come out of that match with a win. Really good match. Douglas got better at his gimmick. Match deserved better colour commentary, so Zabisco couldn't live up to that match. That's kind of suggesting that if I stick Dutch in the chair, I mean, he's not he's not as good of a colour commentator as Zabisco, so I doubt he's going to make these sort of matches any better either. Maybe we need a better colour commentator. I know that Savage can do it. Shall I game the system and pop him in the colour commentator chair? I mean, it makes it a little bit more difficult to write angles because I'm doing that in ROH, actually. I've got Jim Cornette as my colour commentator, but he's also the, the authority figure. And actually, it makes it a bit awkward to, to write the, the segments with him coming out of the announcer's chair to do different bits and bobs. So I probably won't stick Randy in the cover commentator chair, but I do need to maybe shop around and see if I can find a better one than Larry. I thought Larry was good enough, to be honest. And I like him, but never mind. He doesn't seem to be good enough for these big main event matches, but still a really good match. 70C+, plus. I think it might even be the best match I've done so far. And they both have had pretty good in-ring performances. And this is sort of the max I think I can get at the moment. Yeah, so pretty pleased with these two boys today. Good main event. I'm going to end the show and see what the overall rating was. So we've got 61C. And we don't have enough interested storylines going on. Now that's a real kick in the teeth. That's really annoying because... Well, basically, we've lost too much heat in the storylines on this show. I'll have to see what I can do about that. I might have to start some new ones. It's We've got a pretty strict storyline thing going on at the moment. I think I've got to keep them above 
I've got to keep sort of two or three stories above 59 heat, something like that, which is pretty tall order considering that I can only really push them up to sort of 60s and the main event, you know, we see we've got a 70. That's, that's the maximum I can do at the moment, I think, with what I've got. So it's really hard to keep the heat in the storylines. But that really pisses me off. 61C for that show when we had a 70 for the main event is fucking annoying as fuck. That's really annoying. I can't believe that. I'll make my speech. I'm going to give props to Van Dam and Douglas. They both did really well. Who else can I give it to? Who else really performed? I mean, Angel Dust did well, didn't he? Who put in a big performance for us tonight? Who really pushed it? There's nobody else really, is there? All right, well, they're my three biggest guys, but they're the ones who've pushed these ratings up, so I think I'm going to give them all props. I might even... Yeah, I know what I'll do. Right, Robbie Van D, you're going to be pointed out as a good example. Shane, you're going to get given a compliment on a good performance. And same for you, Angel Dust. So let's make that speech. RVD's pleased. Douglas is pleased. And Angel Dust pleased. All right, well, I'm really disappointed. I thought it was a good show. It was a good show. We just fucked up the storylines a bit, which is very frustrating. Right, let's see what they thought of this. Okay. Some thought the show was good. Some found it underwhelming. I don't like that message. Yeah. Uh, very disappointed. Very disappointed. Oh, yeah. That's a bit of a downer, but never mind. All right. What does that look like, then? Yeah. So, you see, most of the segments have been cut out. What actually stayed in? Yeah. You see, I should have made that a minor angle. That would that didn't help. Yeah, alright. Well, there's no point doing the post-mortem, is there? We know what happened. We fucked the storylines up. <sighs> Let's see how injured psychosis is. So, yeah. Got one more TV special with VH1 before we need to try and branch out to pay-per-views. But I've got a funny feeling we'll be signing another contract with VH1 for some more TV specials. Psychosis is injured yet yeah, I thought that was going to tell me how long he's out for the park is knackered we got 0.99 TV rating that sounds good right if we have a go and have a look in the show history we'll see what that means yeah so 750,000 viewers um, that is a big improvement over our first event that's another 100,000 people watched that that TV special, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Yeah, I'm really pleased about the attendance. And we sold it out. That's a surprise. Because we were about 200 people under a sellout on the estimate. So to get a sellout there is really good. So money-wise, I've probably done all right out of that show. But creatively, it was a bit of a fuck-up. Let's have a look at what the money's saying after that. Well, there you go. You see... Now we're turning a profit. We did really well with ticket sales. Yeah, we're still not doing amazing with the TV revenue. Yeah, that's not too bad. I don't know what's happening with the sponsorship money. It doesn't seem very high. And we've already spent more than we spent last month on workers, which is annoying because I don't think I've signed anyone out extra. Yeah, I think probably by the end of the month we might not be making a profit again. We'll have to wait and see. Our TV revenue is already what it was last month, and we've got a couple more shows to do. So, yeah, we're going to get more TV revenue. Maybe we will turn a profit this month. I really hope so. We need a bit more financial clout to, to compete with Vince. So, there we are. Aguila's pissed off. Oh, right. yeah. Okay, Aguila's pissed off because he's obviously... Cause he's, um, injured psychosis psychosis is pissed off because he's injured and we'll just have a quick look see how bad this is for psychosis he's out for 49 days he's going to miss a couple of events isn't he 
right? And um, I don't, I don't mind about revealing this to you as well. Now, Vampiro has a concussion. He can only do angles, so don't expect him to be in the match at the next event as much as I'd like him to be. It'll be the next one after that. He'll just be back in time, I think. So we'll look forward to that. We really need his star power on the roster. And we'll just have to keep plowing on. Start the build-up for the next show. The next big event will be Cup of Coffee in the big time. We've got a four-week build to that to book in. So that's going to take me a bit of time. But I'll try and get back here as soon as possible with another episode of WPW Revolution. We are ranked second in companies. That's interesting. I don't know if we always have been. Well, um, we must have been. But I haven't noticed that before. Yeah, so this has been quite a long one. I've rambled on a bit. But, yeah, well, I hope to see you soon. Please like, comment, subscribe. You know, watch the video would be good as well. <laughs> Just watch the thing would be good. Uh, yeah, I'd like to get more than four people watching these. Like, that's all right. Um, yeah, so... I hopefully I'll see you soon. All right. See you later.